it's nice to just be able to bury it up. Welcome back, Derby fans. Game seven of the Have a Nice Day tournament has commenced. Connecticut Roller Derby All-Stars in white, and they do have a lead jammer right now. That's Trampus. That's a fun I, name. I miss derby names when I'm away. You know, in, in the summertime, it's just delightful that I get to say Trampus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Slamwise Gamgee just maybe handed off. To, to Mangler. Mangler yep. for Grand Raggedy. Mangler, one of the longtime Grand Raggedy skaters who I just recognize by sight because I used to live in Kalamazoo and I've announced dozens of Grand Raggedy games over the past 15 years. Excellent. There's not a lot of that, so don't get used to it, but there's a few skaters that I recognize for sure. Well, that'll be fun. Yeah, so Grand Raggedy in black, Connecticut in white. Connecticut taking a 7-0 lead after a single jam. Ginger is the listed jammer for Connecticut, facing off against Sassa Sassa Thrash. Thrash. Sassa Thrash. That's a fun one to say, too. It's a workout for my mouth, Sassa Thrash. I think she just goes by Sass. I think. We'll check it out. Indeed. I did like some jersey reading before the game. But it's going to be Ginger for Connecticut out front lead for this one. We've got a star pass for Grand Raggedy to Lucy Morales. Lucy Morrill's another one of those longtime Grand Raggedy skaters who I recognize. There you go. That's fun. That's, that game is not going to last long, so I'm going to milk it while it's still available. Yeah. When's the last time you called one of their games? Uh, how long has it been? What's that? How long has it been since you called one of their games? I mean, I, mean, I, moved, away, I moved to Minnesota in 2018, so I don't know that I've seen them since then M much. Yeah. You're, uh, you're going to be... Uh, down to only a few skaters you recognize. It's true. Oh, it's true. I went and saw my old lead from South Bend, and there were, again, three skaters who I still knew. <laughs> that sounds about right. Classic. So 11-0 is the score in favor of Connecticut. Black Cherry is their jammer against Freddy Cruiser, listed jammer for Grand Raggedy. Grand Raggedy, of course, out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, if I wasn't clear about that. A lovely little city. Connecticut, another lead for Black Cherry. Who then calls off the jam two points to zero is the score. So Connecticut with three leads, three scoring jams, and a 13-0 lead to start us off. Another jam, another Grand Raggedy lead. This time it's Thorn, but Van Whalen for Grand Raggedy. Also free and forcing the call off, so a 0 0 jam. Connecticut Roller Derby skates in Waterbury, Connecticut, which is a town in Connecticut. Ooh. Yeah. I used to live in New Haven, Connecticut, which is not far from there. Where so haven't you lived? I'm familiar with the area. What's that? Where haven't you lived? I've never lived in California, believe it or not. Excellent. It's odd, I know. <laughs> Why would that be odd? I don't know. It's like most people, I mean, the most people live there, I guess. Okay. We are back at the top of the jammer rotation order. We have Trampus up against Slamwise Gamgee. Aha, uh -huh. so a four jammer rotation for each team to start. We'll see how long that lasts or whether penalties or other 
decisions change things up. Connecticut, one more lead. Trampas it is. I do not want to miss an opportunity to say Trampas. Yeah. I, I'm going to say that as much as I can today. Very fast pack. And it will be uh, a 4-4 four, four pass between these two teams to start. Trampas calls off this jam before, at least before Grand Raggedy scores any more points. We've got a score of Grand Raggedy, four points. Connecticut, 17. Again, Grand Raggedy in black and Connecticut in white for this bout. Game, this game. And it's not necessarily for the whole, whole weekend, just this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Just a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just a game. As the referees make sure that Mangler is in the penalty box for the correct amount of time for Grand Raggedy. one of the hazards of being an official you saw there uh, as one of the skaters gets knocked to the inside there's a lot of officials in the way so sometimes you run into them it's true ginger is the jamming for connecticut and is your lead jammer impressive one foot balance on the outside to get those four points that's some good balance and leg strength there yeah strength for sure sassa thrash takes off the star. We'll see what she does with that. Uh-oh. We've got a uh, power jam now for Sass and Grand Raggedy as Ginger heads to the penalty box. It's Sass forced to recycle back around. Then we get an official star pass to Mangler. Ginger back on the track after serving those 30 seconds. Actually, it was a whole minute. Was it a whole minute? It was a whole minute. There were two penalties assessed there to Ginger. Huh. I'm, like I said, I'm fresh off vacation. I'm still catching up to what was going on. I didn't know what either of the penalties was, so. Me neither. We can trust that the officials know and that they called it correctly. Yes. Hopefully. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Our officials in this game are Danger, Stompador, Aaron Burr, Mother Flippin' Artist, Mistress of Evil, Jessica Gomez, Quick Grayson, Whiplash, which is a fun one to say, Whiplash, ah. a Riot Earp, uh, Duly Noted, Mortal <laughs> Comcat, uh, class war friend doesn't matter. Uh, Chewbacca, Miller Lite, Manny Shovitz, Fury, Autocorrect, and Dropkick Daisy. Thank you to those officials. Indeed. We could not do this without you. Abso Smurfly. Do you think Whiplash is uh, French? I mean, it's a, it's a reference to the French language. I guess we'd have to find out. Yeah. That's so my favorite one to say so far this weekend. Yeah. Another jam, another lead for Connecticut. Looks like Grand Raggedy had some confusion about jamming and uh, who's okay, doing what. So we had a star pass attempt that went wrong. So uh, the pivot has the star, but is not the jammer. And that is for Grand Raggedy. The jammer, Freddie, is actually in the box. 
And in order to complete the star pass, they will have to, uh, Freddie will have to go out and make contact with the star and then can hand it back off. So we have a little bit of logistics here that needs to happen. Now we have an official star pass as they've both touched it, and now Shoggy has it. Thank you for that excellent and concise explanation, Allie. That's why you get paid the big bucks. I, I don't get paid anything. Black Cherry has scored 16 points thus far. Make that 20, as this is a nice big jam for Connecticut. It's true. Oh, and getting by on that outside on that one skate. Very nice moves. 24 points for Connecticut. Oh, big apex jump. Four more points for Connecticut. And the Connecticut fans are going wild, and the Grand Raggedy fans may be as well, as there were points scored by that team too, but a huge jam for Connecticut. We have Van Whalen on the line for Grand Raggedy and Thorne on the line for Connecticut. Thorne gets lead jammer status for Connecticut. Thorne calling off the jam. No points for Grand Raggedy on that one. Looks like we're still sorting out two points. Indeed, two points. Nope. Only one point. Thank you, Miller Light. Our jam ref. Slamwise Gamgee on the line for Raggedy. Sappho on the line for Connecticut. This is Grand Raggedy's first lead jammer status with Slamwise. I believe so. And Sappho forces them to call it off. And now we have an official timeout. I think we're going to be double checking that score that Miller put in at the last minute in the, from the previous jam to make sure that everything got logged correctly. Indeed. I want to say thank you again to our sponsors, 187 Killer Pads. Just great skating and roller derby skating pads that keep you safe. Excellent technology, the highest rated stuff you can get. All the cool kids wearing them. Those cool kids. And triple eight helmets. You know what else cool kids wear? Triple eight helmets. Yes. Yeah. They've got wonderful sizing technology for the inside and also as a sweat guard. That's a pretty smart idea. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good helmets for sure. Yeah. You want to protect your brain and your knees and your wrists. Mm -hmm. So thank you, 187 and triple eight helmets. It's good to have safety conscious sponsors. It's not like... Uh, we're not sponsored by like Bill's Brass Knuckles, you know what I mean? Right? <laughs> yes, that yeah. would be a harder one to pitch. Yeah, that'd be a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think the officials have sorted what they needed to sort. Ginger is your lead jammer for Connecticut and not for the first time tonight.
Connecticut skater Bruce Finn Tuna goes to the penalty box. As the jam is called, three points to zero in favor of Connecticut. You know, I lived in Connecticut for three years, but I never learned if they have like a special term for people from Connecticut. I mean, like Connecticutter, Connecticutite. Like, I don't know. I can just make up terrible ones. Connecticut? Yeah, maybe. Connecticut? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. I yeah. should know that, but I don't. Yeah. We do have a lead jammer. It's going to be Freddy Cruiser of Grand Raggedy. Trampus for Connecticut, also out of the pack. Grand Raggedy looking to press the advantage and not stop with just the four-point lead, giving Trampus an opportunity to score, which she does. Grand Raggedy's coach voice booming over the crowd, getting that jam called off. So no points on that second pass for Connecticut. Three points for Grand Raggedy. For Connecticut gets lead jammer status almost immediately while Van Whalen heads to the penalty box for Grand Raggedy. Thorne attempts an apex jump there but has to recycle but then skates through pretty quickly after that. Connecticut on a power jam Some disagreement or interesting calls there, but Thorn does get called on a cut to the inside. And so the power jam reverses to Grand Raggedy. We'll see if Van Whalen can take advantage. Solid blocking by Connecticut thus far. So that is Van Whalen getting on to a scoring pass. As Thorne also re-engages out of the box. Four points for Thorne on that pass. And also four points for Van Whalen of Grand Raggedy. That jam gets called at the two minute mark with Grand Raggedy scoring six points and Connecticut scoring 12 points. And you like math, so I know that 12 is two times the number six. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Allie's doing math. See, I think I'm a positive influence sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I very rarely am. That was great. I appreciate it. I thought that was a personal favor to me, and I understand it, and I appreciate it. Thank you. On the line, we have Sappho for Connecticut, who does get lead jammer status, and Slamwise Gamgee for Grand Raggedy. Sappho breaks right through for four points there.
as Slamwise called for the back block. This becomes a power jam for Sappho of Connecticut, who just had to recycle after being pressed to the inside. And now a forearm called on Sappho. This means we will have a jammer exchange. Is a jammer exchange like a gift exchange at Christmas? Kind of. <laughs> Except for you're exchanging jammers. Uh, no, uh, when a, um, a skater gets a penalty, any skater gets a penalty, they go to the box for 30 seconds. But roller derby cannot be played without jammers. So if both jammers are supposed to be in the box, what happens is um, when the second jammer enters the box, the first jammer will be then released immediately so that the game can continue. And the second jammer will only sit for the same amount of time that the first jammer sat for. So not necessarily all 30 seconds, and that way we have an exchange and offsetting penalties. Thank you for that excellent explanation. I just really like making you do that kind of stuff because you're good at it and people know what's going on and it's great. Well, thank you. I've been announcing roller derby since the dark ages where there was such a thing as a jammerless jam. I'm never going to say that phrase again. I say it about once a year because it's gross. Yeah, I... <laughs> We don't do that no more. We don't do that. We don't, yeah. We don't play that. No. Connecticut scores 12 points, I think. Let me make sure. Yep, 12 points on that jam. Grand Raggedy, three points on that jam, taking our scores to 28 points for Grand Raggedy and 89 points for Connecticut. And now Grand Rig. Indeed. Hmm. So each team will take a minute here to see if they can strategize, breathe, mm -hmm. stretch, yeah. whatever the mood calls for, the time calls for, hug each other. It looks like there was a nice group hug out there for Connecticut. Always enjoyable. Yeah. A nice sweaty group hug. Yes. Well, derby is a full contact sport, so if you're sweaty, all of your friends are also sweaty, whether they're sweating or not. That's right. That's exactly right. But I can tell you, as someone who is here present in the arena, it is quite warm, so everybody is sweaty. Yep. So Ginger on the line for Connecticut, Sassathrash, which is my favorite name to say, uh, for Grand Raggedy. Scully from Connecticut goes to the box for a high block. Sass, lead jammer, has a couple of skaters to beat. Great job by the Connecticut blockers reorganizing up front, but they've got to let her go. And that's a four-point pass for Grand Raggedy. Coming out of the timeout. Good timeout, coach. Sass gets a little uh, offensive help blocking to the outside, but does slip a skate off the track, and so has to call that one off. No points for Connecticut on that pass. And four points for Grand Raggedy. Hmm. Worth the wait. Black Cherry out quickly for Connecticut. Freddie right on her heels. Black Cherry calls it. 
Freddie does get a cut call on the end there. So for Grand Reggedy, Freddie will start in the box this next jam. So that was a scoreless jam. Time out. Time out for Connecticut. Jinx. <laughs> Connecticut strategizing how to best take advantage of this power jam situation. Decides to switch jammers. Okay. And uses that timeout to do it. Grand Raggedy's bench coat out discussing something with the officials during the timeout. Sometimes bench coaches will go over and lodge a minor complaint or a would you please watch this mm -hmm. with the officials. Sometimes yeah. that backfires on coaches because then the officials pay a lot of attention to that on both teams and both <laughs> teams end up getting more penalties. It's true. Yeah. Not always, but sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. We do have a lead jam immediately for Trampus of Connecticut. As Lucy Morals joins Freddie in the penalty box for Grand Raggedy. Trampus recycles with a no penalty, no pass. Still gets four points on that scoring pass as the pack prepares for her return. Looks like we've had a star pass for Grand Raggedy. Now star is in the hands of Booty Fett. Booty Fett is another fun roller derby name to say on a microphone. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trampus continuing to score for Connecticut in white. And we had a star pass. Twenty points scored for Connecticut there. It's a big jam. A big jam. Thorne out for Connecticut very quickly. Van Whalen stuck behind that defense of Connecticut. Thorne takes a nice little hop along the inside line and then calls it off. Yep, good job there by Van Whalen catching up to Thorne and forcing the call off right away. of Connecticut on the line, Slamwise Gamgee for Grand Raggedy. Bodies flying all over the track as both defenses doing a great job slowing these jammers down. Finally, Slamwise does get out. but not as lead, and so 
Sappho able to call off that jam as lead. Looks like the officials are talking about their communication real quick. We'll see if they need to take a break to talk about that or if they're going to be able to do it in between jams here. Looks like they are got it. Connecticut starting this jam down two blockers. We'll see if Sass can take advantage, and she does so. Lead jam, Grand Raggedy. As Ginger of Connecticut jamming also on a scoring pass. Oh, and the pack speeds way up, trying to outrun the jammers. It is harder to form a strong defensive wall at that speed. Right. You're just trying to outrun people. Fun to see that old school racing pack, though, for sure. And that's a 4 2 jam in favor of Grand Raggedy. Freddie gets lead jammer status. There was a positioning call called right at the beginning there. It looks like on one of Connecticut's uh, blockers on Just Pickle, um, which probably means that she was standing on the jam line, which you cannot do. Right, yeah, we saw Just Pickle racing around trying to get into position in time and didn't quite make it. Yeah. Now another Connecticut blocker headed to the penalty box. This one is Puss and Glutes, uh, listed as the captain of Connecticut Roller Derby. Puss and Glutes, another very fun thing to say on a microphone. Yes. Four points on that pass for Grand Raggedy. We've got Thorn on the line for Connecticut against Van Whalen for Grand Raggedy. Thorn does get lead. I dare say they slowed, slowed Thorn down a little bit more that time than usual. Yes. Thorn's been a very successful jammer in this bout so far. Van Whalen is also out. We'll see if she can get around and score. Uh, Autocorrect on the outside here. One of our PAC referees trying to communicate something in. Oh, I think there were some numbers turned so that the refs could not see the number. Otto was trying to sing signal what the number was. Connecticut doing a lot of yelling at each other. Trying to work out what the strategy there was with that late penalty. Didn't quite get it, so... There will be no pivot for Connecticut. Oh, no. There is. The pivot is in the box. That's what the yelling was. Oh. Don't put the pivot cap on. Don't okay. put the pivot cap on. There's a lot of confusion that's happening here. Well, that... That was confusing. There, Yeah. We might be doing what we call kind of like a do-over on that one. Yeah. I mean, it's not officially a do-over. It did, you know, happen. But uh, it probably didn't happen correctly, so now they've got to yeah. talk about it. Yeah. All of which adds up to an official timeout. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of chit-chatting. Grand Raggedy's bench coach heading out to see what, what's going on, folk. Very reasonable, I think. Yeah, just 
Just double checking. He walks away nodding. Okay, satisfied with the result. That's always positive. Yep. Just wanted to understand. So the period clock currently reads 16 seconds with a score of 124 to 48 in favor of Connecticut. As the referees uh, really earn more, I was going to say earn their pay, but earn more than their pay. Yeah, they don't get paid either. I know. I know. This is all volunteer, folks. All volunteer. I'm willing to make fun of us getting paid and not getting paid, but not other people. No. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. the referees did a great job sorting that out, making sure we know what the deal is. So Sappho and Slamwise Gamgee, the respective jammers for this one. It's going to be Sappho out front for Connecticut. And Sappho is going to get into the pack and call this one off. No points for Grand Raggedy. Two points scored for Connecticut. And we are at our... All right, welcome back to the second half of Game 7 here at the Have a Nice Day Tournament hosted by Minnesota Roller Derby here in lovely Charles M. Schultz Highland Arena in St. Paul, Minnesota. Charles M. Schultz, of course, the famous creator of the Peanuts comic strip featuring Charlie Brown, Snoopy, and the rest of the gang. Trampus. Lead jammer, four points, and calls it off for Connecticut. So a quick, easy little jam to start this one off and continue Connecticut's uh, success in this bout. My esteemed colleague, Allie Gorey, has been doing this for a long time. She's going to take a one-half break, so she's ready back at 100% for the next bout. So you just get me this half, so uh, direct all complaints to... Just the whole internet. That's where your complaints can go about me personally. Uh, Black Cherry and Freddy Cruiser are the jammers of record to start this second jam of the second half. Freddy out front really being held back by a couple of Connecticut jammers, but finally able to roll around through. Freddy Cruiser is your lead jammer for Grand Raggedy. Ducking down low, getting four points there as Black Cherry also gets around with a star stash. So on to a scoring pass. Freddy Cruiser hits a solid wall of white and calls that jam off. Two more points scored, though, on that second pass. So a 6-0 jam in favor of Grand Raggedy.
Ginger and Sassa Thrash, the jammers of record for this one. Ginger in white for Connecticut. You know, these team names are long. Connecticut is just a long word no matter how you slice it. And Grand Raggedy is a lot of sounds. And I don't know how to shorten either of those things. So that's a lot of syllables. It is going to be Ginger out front, lead jammer for Connecticut. At least I can say it fast. The front of the pack gets out of play, and so Sass is set loose onto a scoring pass. Ginger's going to call this one off. Solid defense there by Grand Raggedy, limiting Connecticut to two points on that jam. You know, to me, Summer Roller Derby just feels like a bonus. You know, it's just like we do the Minnesota Roller Derby season, kind of, you know, October, November into, you know, April, May. And any Summer Derby just seems like just a real treat for me. And I hope you're experiencing it that way as well. Slamwise Gamgee is your lead jammer for Grand Raggedy as Trampus manages to break through and get onto a scoring pass as well. Slamwise is slammed in the back of the pack and is gonna call this one off. Two points to zero in favor of Grand Raggedy. Good blocking there by Connecticut, limiting that to a two point jam. Penalty box is blessedly empty to start this one off. I love to say that just in case it messes things up. We got a lead jam that's going to be Black Cherry of Connecticut. As Freddy Cruiser also gets out onto a scoring pass. And Black Cherry going to call that one off. That's three points for Connecticut. And Freddy does get called then for a back block as that jam expired. Unfortunate for Grand Raggedy. And this, that makes this a power jam for, I believe that's Sappho over there skating, jamming for Connecticut, who I talked to before this bout, very pleasant. Told me a little bit about the team, about how they practice in Waterbury, but they're looking at a different practice space uh, over in East Haven. Grand Raggedy's uh, blocker joins Freddy in the box. And Sappho does manage to make it through Jukin and Jiven and onto a scoring pass. The power jam is over, two jammers on the track. Sappho tries a track uh, apex jump and instead is gonna circle back around and maybe get through the usual way. Nice solid walls of blockers for both teams. And we've got a multiplayer block on Psycho Vision of Grand Raggedy and that allows Sappho to get through and get those four points. Freddy Cruiser is through onto a first scoring pass. And one point scored there for Grand Raggedy as Freddy was flying around the track. So two points on that last pass for Connecticut.
Trampus is your lead jammer for Connecticut. A slamwise Gamgee also gets out onto a scoring pass. Empty penalty box, Trampus gets into the pack, looks back and calls off the jam, four points to zero. Excellent work there by Trampus. Getting exactly to the place where her hips were, scoring those four points and then calling that one off. In the nick of time, as they said in the olden days. Under 22 minutes left in this second half. Van Whalen and Thorne, the jammers of record to start this one off. Each set of blockers, though, meaning to make this a defensive jam. Van Whalen pushing to the front of the pack. One blocker to beat, perhaps. And no, then has to recycle back around. And Thorne breaks through just at that moment to get lead. So just when it looked like Grand Raggedy might get a lead jam out of this thing, Thorne held back for Almost 30 seconds, manages to get through and get lead. Great job there by Puss and Glutes of Connecticut's making, well, holding the jammer back and allowing Thorne to get lead. Real captain stuff there from Puss and Glutes. Van Whalen gets low and approaches, or attempts to approach the pack, but the jam is called just at that time, a 3-0 Pass there for Connecticut. Ginger jamming for Connecticut and does get lead. And that is Sass, as in Sassa Thrash, jamming for Grand Raggedy, forced to recycle back around there. Ginger hit the pack pretty hard, slowed down by Mangler, a longtime solid blocker for Grand Raggedy. Ginger calls that one off, so four points to zero on that pass. But some good blocking by Grand Raggedy, forcing that call off just before Sass was about to score. Under 20 minutes left in this one, 152 to 57 is the listed score in favor of Connecticut All-Stars. Black Cherry almost gets lead and then gets called for a forearm at the last possible moment. Which is gonna allow Freddy Cruiser to get out lead for Grand Raggedy. And this is, of course, a power jam. Grand Raggedy goes with the classic two skaters on each side and then one side closes in to try to give the jammer a path through. Not perfectly successful. And indeed, Connecticut captain Puss and Glutes forces the recycle, which makes Grand Raggedy's bench uh, call off that jam to continue the power jam with the start of this next one. So a little bit of strategery there from Grand Raggedy, trying to get the advantage on the next jam. As Slamwise Gamji forced to recycle. And that allows Black Cherry the opportunity to re-engage the pack and potentially get lead. And indeed, Black Cherry does get lead. Slamwise Gamji 
also out onto a scoring pass, and Black Cherry pushes Slamwise off the track to try to score first. Gets through, gets out, pushed out by Mangler, and calls off the jam. No points for Grand Raggedy, and the officials are conferring as to whether Black Cherry will be awarded points. Yes, indeed, two points for Connecticut on that jam. Two points. Looks like we've got an official timeout. Just to make sure the track is cleared. This official timeout once again brought to you by 187 Killer Gear, Pads, Pads, Killer Pads. I don't think of pads as killing people, but they are killer. They're great pads. Killer as in good, yes. 187 Killer Pads uh, and Triple Eight Helmets, both well-fitting technologically advanced, comfortable, and cool in the, you know, like popularity sense. Equipment. Looks like Puss and Glutes is going to join her teammate in the penalty box. Puss and Glutes wearing a Triple Eight helmet right there in front of me. So I know it's good. as well as 187 Killer Pads on those elbow pads right there. So all of our sponsors right in front of me in the penalty box. Adorning a skater who's been having a fantastic night as a blocker. But it is going to be Sass out front, lead jammer. The two blocker advantage was enough to get Grand Raggedy a lead. Luciana Pulverati is the other blocker coming out of the box. That's just such a fun name. I'm really excited to say it. Ginger does an apex jump, slides down, and then gets back up for four points. Very impressive. Hughes shot there by Pulverati on Sass. Thorn and Van Whalen, the jammers of record to start this one off. Thorn, of course, for Connecticut, gets lead as she has so many times here tonight as Shogi goes to the box for Grand Raggedy as a blocker. Great job by the Connecticut blockers, really boxing up Van Whalen, holding her in the back. Very little progress made off the jam line since the start of this jam as Thorne gets four points and begins another scoring pass. Thorne, great job on the toe stops around the outside two different times, absorbing that hit and tap dancing around to get those four points. As Misty Meanher heads to the penalty box for Grand Raggedy, now to be joined by Mangler Meanwhile, Van Whalen is out onto a scoring pass, but that's going to be called off before she has an opportunity to take advantage. Thorne calls it off with three points on that pass there. 169 to 68 is your listed score, and we have passed the halfway point in this second half.
Trampus and Slamwise Gamgee, the Jammers, a record to start this one off. Slamwise does a nice little pirouette and gets out lead Jammer for Grand Raggedy as Lucy Morals slows down Trampus at the last moment. Trampus is on a scoring pass, but those extra seconds could prove vital for Slamwise Gamgee, who gets through and calls off that jam as the officials confer about points for both teams. One point for Connecticut is scored. And... And it looks like that might have been one point scored for Grand Raggedy as well, so a 1-1 jam, if I'm reading the scoreboard correctly. We got a high block called on, oh, on the jammer for Connecticut. That's Black Cherry. That makes this a power jam for Freddy Cruiser. And Freddy Cruiser has been a successful jammer a few times here tonight. Four points and calls it off right away at the behest of the bench so that they can continue the power jam into the next jam. As Mangler heads to the box for Grand Raggedy. Sass, the jammer of record for Grand Raggedy, looking to take advantage of this power jam situation, but down a blocker, still manages to get through on the inside, lead jammer, Sass a thrash of Grand Raggedy. Black Cherry back engaged, quickly gets through with a hop, skip, and a jump on the inside, not lead, but onto a scoring pass, and racing around the track, hoping to get Sass to have to call this one off. Lucy Morals gives one last bit of resistance, but indeed Black Cherry does get those four points. Lucy Morals with a big miss because Black Cherry was skating just too fast. As the pack is moving, and now we've got a no pack called. And the jam is over. One point on that second pass for Connecticut and I did not see whether points were scored by Grand Raggedy on that last one. They do however get a blocker in the penalty box. I believe that's Booty Fett if I read the number correctly. I don't have a good angle on that at the moment. So Slamwise Gamgee and Sappho are your jammers of record to start this one off. Sappho, short for Suffocation Risk. But Sappho is the preferred name that we're going with here. And it is going to be Sappho lead jammer number 64 in white for Connecticut. Slamwise Jam Gamgee opts to stash the star as Luciana Pulverati heads to the penalty box blocking it for Connecticut. Two points scored on that second pass for Sappho and the jam is called. Nine and a half minutes left in this one. Connecticut All-Stars in white Grand Raggedy Roller Derby in black. Trampus and Freddy Cruiser, the jammers of record. It's going to be Trampus flying through to get lead.
The jam is called one point to zero. No, I'm sorry. One point for Connecticut. Two points were scored by Freddie, who took a big hip check right at the end of that one, but did manage to score those two points before the jam was over. That jam was so fast that Luciana Pulverati was just in the box for the whole jam. As Sappho gets out lead for Connecticut again, Van Whalen jamming for Grand Raggedy. Some excellent blocking there by Connecticut skaters, including Havoc. A simple but effective roller derby name, Havoc. Successfully conveys a little bit of threat and a whole lot of talent. Sappho does get through and call off that jam three points to zero on that pass. You know, Grand Raggedy is the name of this league, but I gotta say Grand Rapids, Michigan is one of the least raggedy cities I've ever been in. It's pretty clean, they've got the beautiful uh, artwork all around downtown. Looks like they're calling a timeout now from Grand Raggedy, so I'm glad I started talking about it just then. Uh, you know, Grand Rapids, Michigan, of course, um, settled long ago by lots and lots of reformed Christians. Uh, the Dutch reformed, and so there's lots of uh, rule-following, clean-cut, tall white people in that town to this very day. <laughs> Meanwhile, while I'm saying silly things about the places these teams are from, uh, I've always been interested in the fact that Connecticut is a place which is named with the word connect right in it. Connect it cut. Uh, cut is also, I guess, technically a word in there. And so is I, for that matter. But connect is really the interesting word. And I do find it to be a pretty connected state. You know, it's not too large. There's a lot of beautiful winding country highways that get you between small towns most of which have a lovely little square in the middle of the town with like a classic old school New England white church in the middle of things. It's a nice place. I enjoyed my three years living in Connecticut and I wish them all the best. They don't need my wishes though in this Derby game as Trampas gets lead for the umpteenth time here tonight. And comes through the pack basically untouched as everybody was worrying about booty fet and the star pass for Grand Raggedy. This time Trampas has to take a little bit more study to path, has to recycle back around. There was a no penalty, no pass in there. And now Trampas does get through and get those four points. Now Trampas does head to the penalty box. That makes this a power jam for Grand Raggedy. Booty Fett has been past the star and she does put it on. But boy, this wall of white jerseyed Connecticut blockers is formidable. Formidable, formidable, formidable. And they keep recycling back, and the pack keeps following along. And Trampas has, is out of the penalty box and re-engaged as Booty Fett has to circle around one more time behind Puss and Glutes, who as a blocker has done that so many times. Trampas with the apex jump for four points. And just an extremely impressive jam from Connecticut here in this one as the two minutes expire. Solid blocking, even with a jammer penalty, 
Connecticut in firm control of that jam. Under five minutes left in this one. Ginger and Sass, the jammers of record to start this one off. Ginger for Connecticut does get out and get lead. That time Ginger gets a little bit of interference from the uh, blockers for Connecticut and gets through almost untouched even as Grand Raggedy was trying to form a triangle and slow her down. This time the triangle is more successful as Sass has passed the star. But four more points for Connecticut and the jam is called 211 to 81 your listed score. Folks, we have one more wonderful roller derby bout coming up here tonight. Minnesota Roller Derby All-Stars facing off against Denver Roller Derby's B team. Should be a lot of fun. Two classic leagues. We're so excited that all of these teams could travel to join us here this weekend for Have a Nice Day. One, I mean, all the way from Connecticut, all the way from Denver. Uh, I've made both of those drives. I do not advise it just for funsies. You know, you're not just going to like cruise there and wave and come right home. It's a bit of a distance. And even Grand Rapids, you got to drive around that whole pesky lake. It's a very large lake. And it's a uh, pain to drive around it, either direction, really. So we are glad to have them all here with us in beautiful, toasty, warm Charles M. Schultz Highland Arena here in St. Paul, Minnesota. That is Thorne jamming for Connecticut. Does spin and twirl and twist and hop around and get lead on this one. Freddie Cruiser is the jammer of record and also onto a scoring pass for Grand Raggedy. And Thorne calls that one off four points to zero. Krampus and Slamwise Gamgee, the jammers of record for their respective squads. Empty penalty box as we've crossed under two and a half minutes left in this bout. And Slamwise out front lead jammer for Grand Raggedy. Slamwise has fought some really tough defensive packs in this bout. And here's another one as Mangler has gone to the box. And Slamwise is gonna call this one off just in time to score a 3-0 jam scoring lead. As the officials communicate,
Grand Raggedy does get their extra blocker off the track just in time, it appears. Meanwhile, we've got a high block called on Sappho. That makes this a power jam for Sassa Thrash of Grand Raggedy. Sass has a lot of blockers to get through. But some strong offensive blocking by Clutch, by Psychovision. And now they're gonna split the pack, forcing Sass to be able to get through. And that is a lead jammer for Grand Raggedy. At the cost of Psychovision being called for a penalty. Sappho is out of the box and through the pack onto a scoring pass as Sass is dealing with a whole lot of white jerseys and forced to call that one off. Three points to zero on that second pass. And now we've got an official review being called by the black team, which is Grand Raggedy. Their bench coach in black uh, with a brightly colored tie-dye shirt over all that matching team uniform, matching black. So, you know, draws a bit of attention. Not a bad thing for a bench coach to be noticed and seen. And so we've got an official review. So the, the way this works is the Grand Raggedy team comes out and pleads their case then the referees will get together and confer and make a determination as to whether the challenge of this official review will be successful or not. So an official timeout is a timeout called by the officials, an official review instigated by a challenge of one of the benches. So we've got officials talking about official things, making sure that everybody knows what's going on, that this bout has been conducted in a safe and correct manner, that the teams get the right number of points. That all of the skaters get their due and that their efforts are not in vain. So it looks like we have an official explaining the situation to bench coaches and captains of the two teams. So now we know what has happened. And by we, I mean the skaters and the benches and the officials. Uh, we over here with microphones, are left to guess. So, Black was requesting an overturn on the pack destruction call on their skater number 66. Booty Fett, that was not, in fact, overturned. And so the refs say they got it right the first time, and we believe them. Meanwhile, the period clock has ended. What? This is the last jam. The final jam. And we're going to have a jammer swap on the final jam as Ginger was in the box, and Ginger is back out of the box. Uh, Shogi is the jammer of record after a star pass for Grand Raggedy. Bonus derby. The jam clock will determine the end of this one. So we've got a full minute left here as the pack endeavors to reform. The penalty box empty just for a moment. Four points scored there by Ginger as Rage of Connecticut does get back into the box. 45, the longest 45 seconds of the night, folks as Shogi does get through onto a scoring pass. A quick four points again for Ginger. 
as Ginger's whole bench cheers, really chants her name, and gets a smile out of the jammer. Shogi back off the track. Another jammer penalty. And now a blocker penalty for, I believe, one of the Grand Raggedy skaters. Yes, I believe that is Lindsay Blohan, longtime skater whose name I haven't gotten a chance to say enough times tonight. And three more points scored on that last pass for Connecticut. And this one is over. The unofficial score, 230-87 in favor of your Connecticut All-Stars.